We have Lloyd Singleton here today to talk to us about managing pests effectively. Welcome, Lloyd. Thank you. Now, what do you mean about managing pests? What are pests that, that we should be concerned about? Well, one of the nine principles of Florida Friendly Landscaping is to manage pests responsibly. And a pest can basically be defined as any living organism that isn't where you want it. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can either change what we want or we can find a way to eradicate or control the pest. One of the best ways to do that is something called integrated pest management. And it's basically a single approach using a lot of different, different methods in combination to prevent pest problems for the most part. And in our landscape, that's a, a big issue because there's lots of things that we, one could consider a pest. So weeds, insects, all kinds of things. Yeah, neighbors' children even, yes. They could all be considered pests. <laughs> and the integrated pest management is going to be like a strategy of different ways to approach it because we're not always thinking about just chemical control. but. Absolutely. <laughs> we definitely want to get away from our old school thinking of just chemical control. Integrated pest management, you start at the very beginning. Start by planting the right plants. Right plant in the right place. It's going to be well adapted to the situation. It's perhaps a pest resistant cultivar or a plant that doesn't attract things that we know are going to be a problem. We can also keep our plants healthy. Typically pests attack unhealthy plants. So if we have a plant that's in the right place, it's well watered, well fed, mulched, treated properly, pruned properly, it's going to be much more resistant to pests and probably won't even have a problem. The, also th uh, the other thing we can do is spending time in our garden. We're keeping an eye out. We're scouting. We're catching problems early before they get out of hand. Oftentimes we can tolerate a certain level of pests in our garden and we just need to know that there's the good bugs coming to attack the bad ones and we can see that if we see it early on. Or even just as you're walking out. If you walk out every day and pick a few weeds as you see them, you know, instead of waiting until the you know, middle of the season and your, your whole planting bed's a mass of weeds, and then it takes a long time to clean it up. And exactly. then you've got all the seeds that they produced as well. That exactly. That's going to make it a continuing problem. Very true. If you, if you can uh, control weeds when they're small, it's going to be much easier to do than when they get large. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the other thing we want to realize is that plants have some aesthetic damage that doesn't necessarily damage their long-term health. And sometimes we need to learn to tolerate a little bit of aesthetic damage. For instance, a, a legustrum tree may have a couple of yellow leaves on it. Well, go pick those off instead of worrying about spraying something that might be poisonous to our environment. Uh, so we can change our, our expectations a little bit, too. You mentioned diseases. What about plant diseases? Because in insects... You know, a little easier maybe to control, but diseases are always a real trouble with homeowners. There, and there really are not all that many diseases that are truly detrimental to the long-term health of the plant. Um, oftentimes, they're an indicator of an unhealthy plant to begin with, so we encourage you to look back and, again, check that watering, check the soil. Uh, is, it, is it well fed? Is it in the right place? Uh, if not, then maybe you need to change where that plant is or what plant is in that spot. But if you do have a severe problem with a plant disease, we at the local extension office can help with the diagnosis of that um, with the plant tissue. But typically it's something you can just live with. It, it is often not harmful to the long-term health of the plant. <clears throat> now I mentioned changing perspective, and I think that's an important thing that we can learn to do. Um, we kind of have been raised in a very modern era when we expect everything of nature to be perfect. Disney-like. <laughs> Disney-like, yes. Doesn't necessarily need to be. We might want to um, have something that's more of a balanced approach in the way we look at things. And so I have a game I'd like us to play uh, where we're kind of changing the paradigm. And you might mention something that I, most of us would see as a pest, but I want to provide an alternative way of looking at it. Okay, well right now, oak leaves all over the ground. Okay. Is there anything we can do about oak leaves? How about <laughs> potential mulch and building soil tilth, composting those oak leaves, and then they just add lots of nutrition right back to the soil. I usually think of noisy air blowers. <laughs> uh, that's true too. Um, dollar weed. Dollar weed is a great indicator that you're probably overwatering your turf. So if you cut back on the irrigation, do it gradually, but wean your turf a little bit, uh, down to probably once a week watering, 
you may see the dollar weed go away. About acorns on my driveway. Squirrel food. <laughs> oh, that's what I have the problem with. <laughs> How about aphids? Aphids, uh, ladybug food. Oh, um, weeds in the sidewalk. Uh, this one... How about instead of a trip to the gym, think of it as a, uh, a new yoga pose or uh, some extra exercise to bend and stoop and pull that weed. Then add that weed to your compost pile and have that nitrogen back in the soil. About Spanish moss. Spanish moss, it can look very, very beautiful and be indicative of our area of Central Florida. But then if you need to harvest that because you don't like it or it's, it's in your way or sight line or something, you could actually um, microwave that or dry it and use it to top dress your indoor foliage plants. It makes a very a pretty cover for the top of a house plant. I have seen it used before, but do you need to uh, microwave it or do something like you that? You do because some of the mites and even um, chiggers, chiggers. That may live in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So either I recommend either drying it in a, a dry, cool spot or microwaving it, a, a bag of it for about a minute. It, smells a little funny for a while, but it doesn't hurt the microwave. <laughs> and that's really about the only way to control Spanish moss is to harvest it and get it out of there? Yes. Okay, how about mealybugs? Again, ladybug, ladybug <laughs> food. And we love our ladybugs. <laughs> Weeds in the turf? Um, an opportunity to have diversity. Mm -hmm. would be an way <laughs> to, to get look away at from that. monoculture. <laughs> to get away from a monoculture of turf, yes. And I can tell you that I've seen many lawns that are neatly mown weeds that serve the same purpose, look good, are environmentally diverse, environmentally friendly, and uh, you can still play soccer. And I've seen lots that have pretty little flowers in them too. I'd rather see flowers carpeting the lawn instead of just grass leaves. But, exactly. Um, exactly. How about ants? Well, <laughs> <laughs> especially fire ants. <laughs> ants are a problem. Now most uh, species of ants are not harmful to humans or pets, but both carpenter ants and fire ants will bite and so that's one of those times you're going to probably need to invest in some ant bait and get rid of that if you use that area actively because you don't want a small child stepping into a fire ant mound. That's so true. Um, how about caterpillars? Caterpillars are, are butterflies to be. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they may do some damage to the leaves, but they're probably not going to defoliate the entire plant. Um, but if you want to have butterflies in your landscape and you want wildlife, which is a very environmentally healthy thing to do, you can tolerate a little bit of leaf damage from the caterpillars. Okay. They're also food for birds. That's you know? true. And yeah. we do like birds, don't we? They're, they're pretty and they sing and, <laughs> and also we have to let them have some of their lunch and supper as well. How about chinch bugs? I can't think of anything for chinch bugs. Oh, man. <laughs> chinch bugs are tough, but uh, big-eyed bugs actually do like to feed on chinch bugs. Oh. And big-eyed bugs are a good one to have in the yard. And um, so if your chinch bug population is not too bad, your big-eyed bugs may take care of it. Anything else we can do to encourage big-eyed bugs? Um, <laughs> right. You can't really release them. You can't buy those to release like you can ladybugs. Can right. You? Oh, well. Mole crickets. <laughs> mole crickets, um, that's a tough one. Um, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there's some nematodes, you know, some different uh, natural ways to control uh, uh, mole crickets, but... <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. I don't know about changing the paradigm. How about mites? Mites are also ladybug food, as well as whiteflies. So, um, oh. you know, we're, we're good to have uh, plenty of foods for those ladybugs, and we like those around. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>